you actually are stiffening, reinforcing, structurally strengthening the floor. This is Blanqui Tomat. Now this is a little bit different to all the other uncoupling membranes that you can get. When you put this down, you actually are stiffening, reinforcing, structurally strengthening the floor. With other uncoupling membranes, you get the uncoupling function and you get all, all the good stuff that you get with those. In special circumstances, you need a product like this. If, for example, you have a floor that is structurally okay, it's fine, but borderline stiff enough for tile. So you would have to apply a second layer of plywood to bring it up to the flexion standards. This here will, because it has structural strength, now just to be clear, uh, other uncoupling membranes and uh, cement board do not have any structural value. This does. If you're installing, for example, uh, a marble floor, a natural stone floor, when you install a natural stone floor, the stiffness of the floor has to be twice that of a porcelain or ceramic tile. So, for example, uh, if you're going to install tile on a kitchen floor, then the deflection standard has to be L over 360. If you're going to install a natural stone on that same surface, then the, the deflection standard has to be L over 720. That's twice as stiff as uh, is required for porcelain tile. You also can't use, for natural stone, you can't use a single layer of plywood. You have to install the second layer of plywood, usually a half inch plywood over the subfloor. That's if you use a conventional uncoupling membrane or if you use a cement backer board, you need to install that second layer of plywood. Blanqui Permat is the only product that you can use, install natural stone over a single layer of plywood subfloor. Of course, the plywood subfloor has to meet all the required standards, uh, three quarters of an inch, blah, 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 all that stuff. But Permat eliminates the necessity of that second layer of plywood and, and it will guarantee uh, stone, natural stone installation over a single layer of plywood. So if it's good for natural stone, it's great for porcelain tile. So it has these glass fiber mesh overhangs. You put them together, it has to overhang, so you get one overhang in the other. And you get a monolithic plane of on the surface. So you get a continuous plane on the surface. Every boxer permit comes in a box like this. The box has 195 square feet, you don't have to buy the, have to buy the whole box, you just buy what you need. You know, it comes with the, the instructions on how to install it. And basically it's the same, same as any kind of underlayment that you put down for tile. You leave a quarter inch gap all along the perimeter. Same, anything that applies to regular installation applies to this here. The plywood, so that means you have to use a uh, modified thin set that uh, complies with the ANSI A118.11 standard or better. Either ANSI A118.11 or ANSI A118.15 mortar on this floor. I'm going to use an a ANSI A118.15 mortar to install this mat on top of the, um, the plywood. Now to install your tile set, what do you use? You need modified or unmodified? Well, you use whatever thin set the tile manufacturer calls for. There's no issue with moisture entrapment with this. I am going to be using a modified mortar on this uh, to install the tile on this mat. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So it's best to start in the corner and work right to left. Put these together. You never want to put four corners together. You always want to overlap them at least four inches. I'm going to go more than four inches, but you always want to overlap and make sure that the um, the corners don't meet. So you need to have an offset. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to start in this corner here and work right to left. I'm going to trim off the overhang on the on that corner and this corner. I'm going to trim it off on the back end. Then I want it to overlap over, over here. I want it to overlap. I'm going to trim off that corner so that this over so on that. And then I'm going to cut this piece in. And then I can start, get that piece that's over there and start on this for the next row. So I'm going to cut in a couple of rows. Then I'm going to make some thin set and start installing it. Shop, you tell me when. Just cut off. Because this is going in the corner, I'm going to cut off the mesh. You can use a utility knife or you can use shears. So you want to make sure you leave a gap at, around the whole entire perimeter. And then right where I have, and then this one here. Gonna, Cut off the long piece. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Cut it tight. Overlap. Make sure over left. Like this. Overlap. So this goes like this. Now I have the cutoff from there that I'm going to start over here. I got lucky on, on that one where I don't have to have to cut it. Okay, so I got a quarter inch square notch shroud. I got an old float that I'm going to be using. And I got some water. I got an old, old sponge. And the reason for that is so this is plywood. So it's going to suck, suck the moisture out. What you do is you wipe it down before you spread the thin set. So best practice is to wipe down the plywood, but wet it down, just damp that will remove any residual dust and give the plywood a drink so it doesn't prematurely suck the moisture out of the thin set and weaken it. Floor has been thoroughly vacuumed and then I'm gonna use the flat side of the trowel to, to, to key in the mortar into the, into the substrate and then I'm gonna use the notch side and I've got my thin set slaking. It's gonna slake, then I'm gonna remix it it's an A, in this case, it's an A118.15 thin set mortar. Uh, you could use an A118.11 mortar if you want. Just look at the standard on the bag to be make sure that you've got the proper uh, mortar for your substrate. Got my roller with a box of tile on it so it's not too heavy. Since then, and I mix this looser than you would for time because you want it to hold the notch, but you want it to be loose so it can transfer to the mat. So, flat side first to key it in. So first you key in your thin set with the flat side of the trowel and then you flip it over and you spread the thin set with the notch side.
next one is so we're going to overlap this This is the kind of coverage you want. Fully transferred. Okay, for, for this row here, I'm gonna take a different tack. I'm just gonna spread enough for, for one sheet, put it in, and move on. I cut the end up here. So I'm going to get all this down, all the way to the door over there, and so I'm filling in this piece here, in this in this corner here by the cabinet, and the piece that I cut off there is right here. So I'm just going to cement that in there. I get that overlap over there, and I get the overlap over here. So I'm just, I'm just going to show you. On a small piece here, so you, th this is a scrap piece, and this is and this is a scrap piece. So you got these two ends that you need to bring together, but you don't have the over the mesh that overlaps. So normally you would have the mesh that overlaps, but these scrap pieces don't have. It. So you can get you can just tear off the mesh. From other scrap pieces, you got sometimes you have a bunch of scrap pieces, and then you can put these down, and then just overlay like that, and now you've created your your overlap on the on both pieces. So that's one way to do it, and I did that in several places here because why would I throw away the you know good pieces of of, of mesh? The other way you can do it is you can loosen the top mesh on the top here pull it back pull it back a bit and cut off the bottom part with a pair of shears You have to have a good pair of shears to do it this way. And now, throw that piece away. Now, you've got like a factory edge, you've got your overlay again. So that's a couple of ways to save your scrap pieces if you, if you want, want to use them. I had several places that I did that. I did it over there.
because I had some scrap pieces that I want to want to throw away and I had a, a decent sized scrap piece over here that I didn't want to throw away so I hope that helps you out this is great stuff when you're you're in a in, you have a problem floor or you've got marbled tile or natural stone tile that you want to install without installing a second layer of plywood or in this case we have a, a tile floor that's borderline and uh, you know a subfloor that's borderline strength wise it just barely meets reaches l over 360 so just to add that added add security uh we added this perm mat to stiffen the floor and give us a little little stronger uh, floor when we're done Okay, so this is what I've got done for the kitchen. I still have to do in here to come around. Got to grind this off here and over here. And got to come around here. Got to come around here and down here. 